welcome to 374. I'm your host Keith Andrew, along here is Tiffany Nation. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Now the honor is all mine. Now for people who want to know what the point of my talk show is, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can still mouth to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of warning disabilities and disabilities. But you should never give up. You should prove to people you can still mount to something. My labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. And you should prove to them, hashtag, break the labels. I like to say, never give up and prove people wrong. It's just going to be a half hour, 45 minutes every time. And you can say anything you want, curse if you want to. It's freedom of speech, freedom of self-expression. And starting off, what can you tell us about yourself? Well, my name is Tiffany Nation. I am a single mom of one beautiful grown son. Um, and I am basically refinding myself and finding my passion in my art doing um, recycled make and take crafts and part of my core business is teaching people to find value and purpose and use broken and damaged things and just because you may not see the value and purpose in something doesn't mean that it doesn't hold a value and a purpose and that's true of people of what I believe and um, you know I did classes and uh, help take, you know, even like this necklace that I've got um, on, it's kind of hard to see, but it's a bullet, it's a repurposed bullet that I have um, acid etched, I've created my own um, solution to acid etch them, and I teach people, you know, how to do that, as well as um, taking anything, it might be, whether it's um, they've got a bunch of jewelry laying around and they don't know what to do with it anymore, but they don't want to throw it away because it was maybe something that they really liked, how to redesign it into maybe a new thing, a new piece of jewelry. Or I've taken um, book old books and reworked them into pieces of artwork and shown people how they can do that. Um, so basically repurposing just about anything that you can imagine um, and taking things that you probably hadn't even thought of, some things you haven't even thought of. Make, I've even made um, jewelry, um, little beads, paper beads, um, and I'm sure some people, some of your viewers probably have thought of that idea and, and heard of it, but some people haven't. They think, how do you make jewelry out of bead or paper beads but it can be done and people enjoy that and it it actually kind of takes them back to their childhood because they it gets them into that creative mode and I really enjoy doing that because everybody likes you know craft time and things but um, it uh, actually gives people a chance to kind of get their creative cap on and kind of think outside the box and see things that they normally may not otherwise see because I get to show them that where they're sh they're looking at something that's maybe sometimes it's a broken piece of pottery and I show them how to repurpose it into maybe like a solar lighthouse and and then it's something that's oh wow that's beautiful again and there they see the value in it then and that's kind of um, you know I, I feel like what you want to do with like your disability and going around and showing that people like that have disabilities have a lot to contribute and and they have a lot to offer and everybody should realize that that just because you know you have a disability does not mean that you are you can't contribute something to us and you don't have something to offer and I really love that about this this show and when I found out about that I was like that's that's so great because it's it's great to get that message out no absolutely now one thing I do want to add to you then we can go back to my other questions but I am keeping an eye on that and you said that that's actually a bullet so a bullet from a gun or is it just a bullet just in it's just a name it's a bullet. This actually is a 357. Um, I've done nine millimeter, um, a 350 aught, um, seven mil. 
um, I can I take it and um, I've learned to customize it. If somebody wants a specific design on a bullet, I can custom etch it um, to a specific design that they want. Um, I've had people custom order like steampunk pieces. This 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 is more of like a steam steampunkishy feel to it. Um, I've done biker pieces um, because actually the, like the choker collar is the, like recycled jeans. The material part of it is recycled jeans. I've had done them with recycled leather belts. Um, and then the bullets add to that, you know, so it's layer upon layer of recycling materials. Of course, you know, like the chain, some of the chains and the jump chains and things that you have to hook to make the actual necklace are not recycled. But then again, you know, you have to put some new with the old, but yeah. Um, they are actual real bullets. Well, let me ask you guns. about this because bullets are meant to explode. So, uh -huh. one, do people give you luck saying, why is he walking around with a bullet around her neck? And two, <laughs> how hard was it um, putting heat in it and putting a coat over it? Because bullets at a certain temperature tend to pop. So, it looks really nice. So, that doesn't mean. I don't want you to like walk around on a hot day and all of a sudden go. <laughs> well, no, no, these are all spent bullets, so they're all they've all been used, and so they're not going to be like exploding on anybody or anything. They're, they've all been spent and, and used, so these are just the casings of what's left of the bullets. And um, I, I started out with bullets because um, I do own uh, several guns and I had been to the shooting range and being in the um, kind of mode that I am of you know, recycled, I had all these casing rounds there and was getting ready to clean up my little stall from when I had, you know, been shooting. And I thought, that's kind of a waste just to throw them in the trash. I wonder if there's something I can do with them. And um, I got on, I got on Pinterest, and I, I began to see that a lot of people had begun to make those little the bullet etchings out of them. And so I began to research, you know, what what it took to to make these little etchings, and saw that you know it was. They did it with acid, and you had to. It was a specific acid, and then um, of course, I read about the acid, and um, you can either buy it and um, get it yourself, um, or you can make it yourself. But if you make it yourself, then you have to be very careful and make sure that you follow specific instructions because there again, you're dealing with chemistry and very volatile acid ingredients um so but um i chose to forgo buying and make my own acid and that's what kind of gives mine a little bit of a different um etching when i do mine um but yeah they um do tend to um etch a little bit differently than those that you see on on pinterest but i thought wow, that's, that's something cool that I can do. And I started doing it and several other people were like, that's pretty cool. Why don't, why don't, why don't you show, you know, show me or, you know, make one for me. And so it kind of became a thing and I hadn't really planned on making specifically, you know, bullet jewelry, but because it, it did kind of resonate with me and it kind of all of a sudden dawned on me. And I guess God shifted me in that direction of like, well, you know, this is usually more or less been something that's been thought of as a negative thing because, you know, a lot of people and in, in the news here lately, there's been a lot of controversy of, of guns and whether or not they're good or bad and, you know, how you use them and things and, and that type of thing. And um, I've often talked told people that you know a bullet is never is neither good nor bad but it's bad it's either good or bad in yeah. the person or the hand of the person that's wielding the gun that is used in and that's the same with people um you can either be a good person or a bad person it's neither it's neither you know good or bad it just depends on the person and that's kind of what i wanted to you know where i wanted to go with the bullets and the jewelry that i've started doing there is because you know, I wanted them to see that, you know, you can you can make something that everybody thinks is bad into something that's very pretty and good that people see differently because you've presented it differently. It's like the saying, um, like George Collins said, uh, guns don't kill people, people with guns kill people. 
Yep. Yeah. And you mentioned a camera spray. I started to laugh before in my head. <laughs> uh, do you remember the episode in The Simpsons where um, Bart cheated on his test and everyone thought he was a genius? And he was in <laughs> chemistry class and he, teacher says, you know what happens when you mix harmful chemicals together? And he said, yes. And next thing you know, the classroom explodes and he's covered in green. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go wrong with Simpsons. Simpsons are a, a classic these days. It is. But, do you like the yes. new ones or do you like the old ones? Um, I tend to like the older ones. It seems like the newer ones have, I don't know, maybe it's because they've run so long. It's, it's kind of like, it's kind of run its course and now they're, they've are they just gotten kind of old. But I like the, the older ones a little bit better. Kind of like Star Treks, you know, right. the Star, the original ones versus the new ones. Of course, some of the newer new newbies, they, they'd have a, we'd have a debate there with that. So, <laughs> well, I do like to make you laugh. So, while on the subject of The Simpsons, who's your favorite character, and what were some of their favorite lines that you repeat? Oh, Cowabunga, dude! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> It'd have to be Bart, you know, Cowabunga. I, like Homer. I, I don't think you can get much more American boy than that. Homer's favorite line, so I like, was uh, he walks into the room and says, My ears are burning. It's like, Dad, we weren't talking about you. No, my ears are really burning. I, I wanted to look inside, so I went a Q tip. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or how about the do or donuts? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The ID everyone that where he's arguing with his brain. He says, Shut up brain or I guess stab you as a Q tip. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. So Okay. Well, um I I, I um well, I was gonna I was gonna ask if you watched um any other comedy um sitcoms like that, but um and I had one in mind, and it just left me. That goes to show you the older you get, the quicker they leave the room, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, besides the Simpsons, but I can laugh at it over and over. Uh, Family Guide, I get it's hit and miss. Uh, mm -hmm. I like Futurama. How could I forget about Futurama? I've watched Futurama quite a bit. I and like, I, I know, I know some people think, wow, well, how can you watch Futurama or someone of my age watching Futurama? But it, it is kind of funny. It, it's, if they haven't, then, and you know, I, I, I don't know if you have remembered or even are aware of this one, Space Ghost. Yeah, I remember about Space Ghost, Ghost to Ghost. Yes, yes, I loved that one. I loved that one. And Gorak over there, <laughs> and he'd be over there in his little thing. <laughs> that was always like my favorite character. <laughs> he'd be over there insulting him, and Space Goose would be over there just laughing. At him. It was just like. What about some of his funny. famous guests? Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize. Oh, go ahead. Well, what about some of his guests? He had a Marfa Kidder, he had Adam West. Uh, yes. My favorite, Hulk Hogan. Oh, I think I missed that episode. Because it, uh, it always came on so late at night there. And then yeah, it, midnight. And it's hard to find the reruns these days. You can't hardly ever find, I can't hardly find the reruns. And they don't show them on Netflix. You can buy it on DVD. Yeah, uh, yeah. But even then, it's it's hard to find them. That's like, um, I don't, I'm not even sure if you... I. I watch some of the some of the funniest or craziest like off the wall stuff like um, um, most extreme MXC. I don't know if you've. I remember that. It, most extreme. I most like extreme how, challenges. I like how they're Japanese, but they have American voices. <laughs> yes, yes, and there was uh, there was always those two guys that were always dressed up like the. "Quote unquote," like Japanese dudes with the with the little um, the hair with the sumo hair and stuff, and but yet they were wearing the the Japanese robes. Ken and uh, what was the other guy's name? Ken and um, I haven't seen him in a long time. Oh, I know, but that, but those those guys were always so funny. 
Oh, and you can't find those anywhere except for on DVD too now. So that's but, true. Yeah, I think I think I've moved us way off topic there. So why don't you head us back in the correct time? Hey, topic hey, anything here. can happen. It's in <laughs> have a normal conversation, making a new friend. But I will ask you a couple of easy questions, then we go to the hard hitting ones. When you okay. were uh, growing up, housewife growing up, and when you were in high school and college, were you a study nerd or party animal? Ooh, tough and tough. Let's see. Um, when I was growing up, ooh, hmm. I wasn't too much of a stu study nerd because things came pretty easy for me, so I didn't have to study too much. Um, so I guess I goofed off. Um, but I, but interesting fact, I was a preacher's kid, so I got into a lot of trouble, so. <laughs> um, and, um, as far as college, um, it was, um, I started college and then I had my wonderful son and then dropped out and then became a wife and then, um, did the wife thing for a for a long while, and um, then ended up going back to college years, years, years later. So, yeah, it, 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 I kind of took a break and did did the whole raising of my son, which was a, a wonderful, wonderful surprise in between that time, and uh, learned a lot, life education, that type of thing, and uh, then went back to school and got got my degree, and so. What about any no. sports? Any sports where you're um, very athletic in? Uh, I did do track when I was in school, but um, I wasn't a complete, um, I guess I, I was more into the arts when I was in school, arts and um, drama. I did drama and, oh, I did debate. Um, I had one, I had my debate teacher um, tell me that um, he had no doubt that I would be a fiery, competitive redhead. So, <laughs> yeah, that that still holds true. I can argue. I can argue the hind leg off a dog. So, <laughs> well, I do. I do love the blue in your hair. So that brings up my next question. Question: Were you gothic or were you a punker? Actually, being a preacher's kid, I wasn't allowed to be either, but secretly I wanted to. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to, like, really rebel until um, I got out of the house and um, I was able to let my creativity um, explode, um, which is why the um, blue hair there, and um, I've had it purple and um, blonde and even black and... Um, I just like expressing, and um, I love color, and um, I, I guess that's where that stems from. I always keep, usually these days, I usually keep some of the, I usually keep red because that is my natural color, red, and I'll have, you know, like some highlights of purple or blue or green or, you know, blonde or something like that, but I'll keep the red underneath since that is my natural, but. No, yeah. Good. Well, thanks. But yeah, that's that's where it came in. So I really wasn't. I really didn't get too 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 wild there. Um, it was mostly through the expressionism of, of arts that I got wild. Now, did you ever question? I was going to ask you. Then we can take a quick, quick commercial break. It's did you ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids, or not into the whole human pyramid stuff? Um. About the closest I ever came to a human pyramid was getting stuffed in a telephone booth. <laughs> that's not that's not a human pyramid at all. But if you have to count um, being how many humans can you get in a closed space or how many humans you can do, that's about the extent of it. <laughs> would, he, would he be up for that or you don't do that anymore? Do I do what now? Oh, the pyramid stuff. Are you still interested in doing that or not really? Hmm. Well, like I said, I, I've never actually been a part of that. Um, the closest I ever came to actually building something or being a part of something like that was 
doing the um, how many can you fit in a hum- in a telephone booth? And of course, we don't have telephone booths anymore. So, right. <laughs> hey, don't knock it till you try it, right? Yeah. But so. uh, while on the subject, how many people did he get into the phone booth? I think we got twenty-one people. And where were you? Top, bottom, or middle? Um, I was in the middle. So you were pretty much like a pancake, right? Oh yeah, we were we were stuffed in there really good. Of course, they they were choosing like the tiny people. And back in my younger days, I weighed all of me may, maybe ninety six pounds, soaking wet. So when you're that tiny, they're going <laughs> to shove you in there. <laughs> well, was it mostly guys or girls, or was it both? Um. I think it probably ended up being more girls because the girls were tinier. <laughs> Although you, you did have to throw in a few guys in there, so they didn't do the gender thing and say it was all. Oh, it was all girls. It was all girls. <laughs> yeah, they they did throw in a couple of guys. I love that stuff. I'm a loser. <laughs> <laughs> so we're no. gonna take a quick muscle break, and when we come back, I'm gonna pass the show over to you. Okay. A message for yourself or as a gift for someone else. For personal connections, shout outs, birthdays, proposals, weddings, and much more. Enter your details about yourself so the celebrity can record a personal video message especially for you, including details such as your name, age, birthday, hobbies, or whatever else you include. As soon as the video has been recorded, you'll get an email with your link so you can share it on social media or download and keep it. Celebrities record videos as and when they can, usually within two weeks. But if you want a video for a specific date and it does not look like it will arrive in time, you can cancel it and get an instant refund at the click of a button. There are hundreds of celebrities to choose from and many more joining every day. Search by category or genre. Buy a gift voucher, get updates and offers, and encourage your favorite celebrities to join so they can connect with fans in a fun and unique way. Raise money for their charities and much more. So order your video now for yourself or for someone else. 174. I'm here with the talented and beautiful Tiffany Nason. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show once again. Well, thanks for having me. And again, I'm glad to be here. Oh, absolutely. The honor's all mine. Now, it's the last 13 minutes left of the show. I'm going to pass it over to you. Was there anything you wanted to know, anything you wanted to talk about? This is your time, after all. Oh, my time. Ooh, nobody gets to ask me that too much. But, okay, let's see. Is there anything good that we want to ask? Hmm. Okay. Um, so, like, what were you like as a little boy? I mean, were you like the devious little kid that liked to go around into getting into trouble? Or were you just like the mild-mannered kind of shy, quiet guy? Um, let's see. Well, I have two personalities for me. When I'm with my family, I'm shy. And when I was in school, I was still a little shy. But when I got fired up, I was a little like a little hell laser. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, that second personality come out. Oh, mm-hmm. What about you? Do you have two personalities and one with your family? Like you have this personality, but when you're by yourself in a group of friends, you act completely different? No, pretty much what you see is what you get. I usually always try to be honest and try to be the person that I am and the person that you see um, because I like myself and I, I like the person that I am. Um, I, I think that I'm a colorful, um, vibrant, vivacious type of person. Um, I sometimes actually have no problems telling you like it is sometimes. <laughs> and I guess that goes typical from the red hair, you know, them red hair people will tell you what they think and what's on their minds. But um, 
through the years, I've actually learned to um, zip it a little bit and use a little bit of wisdom and a little bit of tact, you know, and a little bit of that southern charm in case you hadn't turned it, you know. Us southerners down here, I, and I know because I asked you this before where you were from, and you said you were up north in New right. York, and I, I'm down in Chattanooga, so, you know, and I, I was actually born in Georgia and South Georgia, so. Uh, as southerners down here, you know, we, we have all that southern charm and, you know, we have all that southern hospitality and yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, sir, no, ma'am, you know, all that politeness, you know, but um, we, we, uh, Irish as I am, we can be a little hell spitfires too, so we got to learn to tone it and smooth it out with some of that sweet southern Irish charm and southern hospitality. When you get all of that mixed in together, you get somebody like me with a lot of personality and a lot of spitfire and, you know, a lot of spunk. So it, it's kind of mellowed out through the years. Well, you got to love spunk. <laughs> yeah. So, well, well, actually, while on the subject, is I have three last subjects for you, if you don't mind. The first one is uh, uh, Looney Tunes. Did you find it funny or did you find it racist? <laughs> oh, well, uh, I thought it was funny. Um, I never really saw much um, racism about it, but of course, you know. I understand why some people would see it as racism, um, but of course, if you're going to nitpick everything, if you start seeing racism in everything, or you start seeing you know negativity, or if that's all you're looking at, then you're going to find it in everything. And I right. think that's true. I think people need to realize that that's true of everything. If all you want to see and all you want to focus on is the negative and if all you want to focus on, on is in that one key thing, then that's all you're ever going to see. And that's you're going to see that in every single thing. And there can be that in everything that you look at. But if you want to look at a larger picture and not really view it as that and see a larger picture of things, then the larger picture outweighs that tiny, minute thing that might be there. And it makes the world a better place if you do that overall, I think. At least that's my opinion. No, uh, my two cents worth for the day. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> well, absolutely. My favorite character, the uh, more I think about it, the more it's true. My favorite character from uh, Looney Tunes was the, uh, the rooster. Well, 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 now I say there, bud. I, 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 I say there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he was, he was a good character there. Now, my next question is: a lot of people. What is your honest opinion about this one? Yeah, a lot of people are big fans of Dumbo, like I am, and a lot of people always say they always wanted to reenact the pyramid from the movie. Do you think that's a good idea, or do you think it's an accident way to happen? Um, I'm a little bit torn. I tend to like originals a lot because there's a lot to be said for originals and how they're done, and a lot of times if you try to redo things, they don't do them as well, and a lot of the messages are lost, and the the originality and the pureness of the original is lost in the translation of the remake. So, I'm a little bit torn, if that makes sense. I agree, but uh, hypothetically, if you were invited to do reenact the pyramid from Dumbo, would you do it? Well yeah. <laughs> I mean who wouldn't? I mean if you're if if it's it, yeah, yeah. Well where what, would you want to be? Yeah. If you had do what? To, oh what character would you want to be? Top on or middle? Oh. Well, since um I get to choose, I'd like to be on top. Hey, why did be on? It's it's on my things to do list. I always wanted to you know, do that. I love that stuff. But a, a lot of people always talked about you know reenacting it and it never did. So it's kind of like, hey, why not be the first to do it, right? 
Yeah. We should do that. You should you should get that started. And I bet you would get that started, right? Yeah. Hey, if you, you want to help me out, it enough, it. then you could make it happen. And then it, if you want it bad enough, you can see it happen, make it happen, believe it's going to happen. Boom, before you know it, it's going to happen. You're going to make it happen. <laughs> now, my last question for you is social media. Do you think social media can make you or break you? <laughs> That's, that comes with a two-edged sword, you know. Um, I know social media is important. And um, if you let it, it can be important. But if you already know who you are, then the opinions and... The things that people say on social media are not going to matter. You're going to make it whether or not you have social media or not. Now, social media is a platform to get you to where you want to go. But if you've got, I mean, you look at people, Rockefeller, and um, I say Rockefeller because every, it doesn't matter who you are. Everybody knows that name. Did they have social media back then? No. I mean, people in that generation never had social media, and they don't even know what, they didn't know what that was, and they, yet, they built themselves, and they made themselves who they were because they knew who they were, not because of what other people said they were, or who other people thought they were, or how many people said something good about them or how many people were in their network they built a good product they built a good name they built a good company and they sold it to the people and their reputation and their 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 person themselves their them built it and made it what it was because of who they were and who they knew they were not because of anybody else um so it's kind of is a two-edged sword um Nowadays, I, I know people will debate. No, you have to have it, but no. I'm kind of old school because I, I, I know that there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of good that can come with it, but then there's also a lot of bad that can come with it. You know, it, like I said, it, it, it is a double-edged sword, and depending on how you choose to use it, it can either make or break you. And um, I just think it, it's, it's something that you could be weary of if you don't know who you are and know your limitations. If you're too, too focused on here and what people are saying about you and letting it affect you as opposed to you being the influencer um, of the people that are commenting and stuff and directing that in a positive way, then that's where it can be a very hurtful thing and a very uh, harmful thing. But if you're the one that's driving it and directing it and heading it to where it needs to go, then that, that can be a very powerful thing and that can be where things can happen and change can happen. No, yeah, well, absolutely. Now, I do have one more question for you. And uh, before I get to it, how can people follow you on social media? Are you on Twitter, Stage 32, Instagram, all that fun stuff? Okay, I, I am on Instagram. Um, I am on Twitter. I don't do Twitter much because I just, I never could get the hang of it, to be quite honest. <laughs> but I am on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, um, Instagram and, and Facebook. Um, I actually have not heard of the other thing that you mentioned. Um, I do try to keep, you know, current to, to a degree. I don't try to be so so enamored with all the social media platforms that I'm consumed by it. But I do try to keep a little bit, you know, I at least know, you know I've heard of Tumblr and, you know, those kinds of things. But... I don't try to follow every single one of them, but I do keep up with like Instagram, Pinterest. Oh, I've heard of Pinterest <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Etsy and, you know, some of those. But, um, yeah. 
All right, now my, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But wrapping up our talk show, when I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your first reaction? And after being interviewed by me, how do you feel now? Um, I was actually a little bit intimidated because I've never done a YouTube video before or a interview kind of thing before, um, especially with Skype. Now I have Skyped um, with friends and um, done Skype interviews before, um, but never like like this um, type of interview. Um, so it was a little bit intimidating, and um, I was. A, thinking it be to be more of, um, kind of uptight and, and not so much fun. I, I've had fun on this actually so um, now that we've done it I've been like yeah I could do another one of these this is this is this has been pretty pretty cool Keith so I've really enjoyed it so yeah yeah I appreciate it now stay tuned for after show I have a couple questions for you about wrapping up our interview segment it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest and I'm looking forward to part two down the road. Oh.